Retro Rob's Daily Videos. Hey, Rob here, and today we're going to be unboxing the Ardu Boy. The Ardu Boy was on a Kickstarter about a year ago. It looks a little bit like a Game Boy that's been flattened and squished. Uh, it's really tiny. Uh, what attracted me to it is it's based on the Arduino. Uh, it, Arduino is kind of a it's kind of a combination uh, programming language and hardware. Uh, it's made basically for controlling things like robots and such, or you know, parts of robots. But in this particular case, they turned it into a game system. In fact, a little tiny Game Boy. I mean, and this sucker has like just almost no specs, but it's done in a really clean method. So uh, I'm gonna open it for you. Uh, this is gonna be a basic unboxing. I'm not like a huge uh, pool of knowledge on this particular system. So I'm going to do a one week later on this one as well. Obviously I'll be doing some other uh, continued stuff on the GPD XD as well. And I'll be back on the Nvidia Shield for a bit as well as some other stuff. It's gonna be a busy month for me or busy exit end of the month. Uh, so anyway, some interesting things about this. Let's uh, let's just take a look here. <laughs> this can only store one game at a time on it. It has very tiny flash. It's got a 32K flash on it uh, for storing games, uh, which is fine because this sucker's got like, I think 2.53 uh, gigs of RAM. I, gigs, no, K of RAM, sorry. Oh yeah, barely anything uh, as far as K uh, kilobytes goes. So actually it, it has all the specs right here written on it. Uh, and it says it's 128 by 64 backlit screen, which is true. It's got a piezo speaker, which means it's kind of loud. Lithium polymer battery, which means you got to recharge it with a USB cord, which I do not believe was included. Bastards. Bastards. Oh, well. Oop, wrong camera there. I'm trying to hold it up to the wrong camera. Uh, yeah, 2.5K of RAM. 1K of RAM. 32K of flash memory. So you can store one game, basically. It's done like a, if you look, it's done like a, uh, like a candy wrapper, like, or, or like a, like a food stuff. It's a serving size one unit. <laughs> All right, so I originally ordered the yellow. So uh, I changed my order midstream to a white one. We'll see which one I get. I wasn't 100% sure because uh, their, their system's been a little bit convoluted. It hasn't been the worst kickstart I've done by far, uh, but it, it's had its hiccups. Uh, let's open this up. Oh, I did get the white one. Good. Yeah. So uh, here it is. The Ardu Boy. Oh, it's a tiny little thing. Is this the power switch? Jesus wept. Oh, there it is, yeah. Look at that. And see, there's the screen. It's backlit, but it's black and white. And it's got a blob attack on it. I don't know if I can get to zoom in on that a little bit better. Yeah, autofocus is not doing its job today. Thanks, autofocus. Way to go. Really, dude. There we go. There it is. And there's the screen. Really nice little screen. Uh, you can see the Ardo Boy is written on it. The back is made out of aluminum. Very nice stuff. Uh, the front is made out of a pretty decent grade of plastic. It's actually a really well built unit. Uh, the buttons, yeah, they're pretty clicky. As you can see, there are six buttons, uh, up, down, left, right, and two of these buttons. And you can't see the screen again. There we go, zoom in there. You can see it's got some pretty nice animation. But the games are, of course, tiny for it because there's not much RAM. So uh, one of the reasons I picked this up is I was trying to, uh, actually I was thinking of getting back into programming a little bit and I thought, uh, the Arduino based systems would be a good way to get into that. Oh, here, I should show you this too. Uh, they're supposedly pretty simple to program for. 
and I was I was probably about 75 to 80 percent way through my programming degree. Uh, that was going to be my third degree, and then I just quit out of it because it was boring. But in my defense, I was programming databases, and it wasn't a lot of fun. It's not really my thing. I'd rather be programming games, which I used to do in high school. So I thought this would be a good way to get into it. Pretty nice little unit. Yeah, they got a little thank you. You helped make this. A wild Ardu boy appears. Ardu boy used Kickstarter. It was super effective. That's true. You have been challenged. What will you create? And that's the whole idea of the Ardu boy is that we're going back to uh, the idea of creating your own games on uh, systems like you used to when you're a Commodore 64 user or a VIC-20 user. All right, sorry about that. I usually don't like to do jump cuts in my videos, but every once in a while it becomes necessary. And in this case, it was indeed necessary. So my count of how many games are on here right now is 25 on the official list. Uh, actually, a couple less. I think it's 23. But there are a lot of games in development. It has a fairly rabid developer base, so I would hope that some more games are going to be coming out over time for it, uh, just like they did on things like the GP2X. I got to cover that again one of these days, too. I haven't covered that since the uh, early days of this station. But it, it, the GP2X is dead now. But anyway, the uh, it's the same idea uh, that it's all going to be homebrew development, not major developers. As far as specs go, I know I covered them just a little bit. I really wanted that coffee. Uh, I know I covered them just a little bit, but let's go over them real quick in case I missed anything. Uh, the processor is an Atmega. And it is a 32U4. Sorry about that. My eyes are just going... That is one heck of a tiny little processor. Memory, 32K flash. That's storage, 2.5K RAM. That's what it works in and lives in. Man, that's tiny, huh? <laughs> that is just crazy. 1K EPROM, that is reprogrammable. Uh, connectivity is USB 2.0, but it does have a built-in HID profile. What that means is you can plug this into your computer or even uh, your handheld device like your phone and you can use this as a controller because it has a hid profile so you can actually program this if you want to use this controller with say your NES emulator and, and you know it's a good controller it it does feel pretty solid it's got a nice click to it so you might want to use it for that and at the very least you know if you're in the airport or something and you got your laptop and you just quickly want to play a game you can plug this sucker in there if you don't want to play a game on this obviously and you can use it as a controller so it's actually really quite nice. Uh, as far as inputs goes, uh, it has this D-pad basically. They're all individual, by the way. If you look at it, they're all actually separate, like a PSP, not my favorite configuration, but it's small enough that it feels okay. Uh, two buttons. They got a little bit of a click to them. Can you hear that? Wait, there. Uh, also, the power button sitting at the top. It is tiny and kind of hard to get into. There's a little bit of an indent in there so you can get your fingernail in there. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> you might want to bring a stylus or something with you if you happen to have fat fingers like I do and no fingernails. That said, I do have fingernails so I can get to them. As far as the screen goes, it is a 128 by 64 one-bit OLED. That means there's one color. It's white. And uh, OLED means it has that really, really bright screen. And believe it or not, I can actually see it clearly even though I'm blind as a bat. So not bad, really. Uh, Two-channel piezo speakers. That means it's fairly loud if it wants to be. It's, you know, they're tinny. That's how they are. The blinky LED I haven't seen operating yet, but I will take their word for it. Battery, 180 milliamps, which doesn't sound like a lot. It's a lithium polymer battery. Uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it powers this sucker for eight hours because, you know, it draws nothing. If you want to recharge it, uh, what that means is you have to go through this USB port right here and plug it into your computer or an outlet, I would imagine, and uh, that will charge it. So, uh, general feelings about this. Well, number one, I like the device. I think it's awesomely portable. Uh, I like the fact they actually went with some real metal on the back, standard screws, uh, the plastics are really quite good. This is a very high quality feeling device. I would have liked it if they would have 
uh, allowed for more than one game at a time on here. I would have liked the ability to switch through games uh, other than if the, uh, I think they call them screens, uh, screen was designed for uh, multiple like little games. So it would have been nice if I could have just loaded in uh, totally separate games instead of having to load them in one at a time, which is a little bit weird. Uh, packaging. Uh, I know this isn't a big deal for most of you out there, and I've gotten it for mentioning packaging before. However, I do display my stuff, and I love displaying the weird stuff like this Ardu boy. So the fact that it comes, it comes in this little bag uh, is kind of disheartening to me. I would have preferred if they would have put it in a little tiny box with this label on it and maybe a picture of the Ardu boy on the back of it. That would have made for good display. Because remember, I do bring this to uh, places like MGC and show these little guys off because I think people like to see them. Uh, and good packaging does help. Also, it helps maintain the system. That said, I think this system was really just meant to be picked up and uh, played. All right, so that is it for the Ardu Boy until next week. If you have any questions about the Ardu Boy that you would like me to answer, I can answer them in the next video. So, one week from now, more Ardu Boy. Got a lot of other stuff coming up too very soon. How to hack your N64 to run any country's games. Really easy, by the way. It's going to be like a five minute video. Uh, also, I got a game review coming up and. Oh, just more stuff. Just more stuff. Uh, more GPD XD. A little bit more NVIDIA Shield coming up, too, in the near future. And a rant about Doom. Man, there's a lot of stuff coming up. All right. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a big favor. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. See you next time. Retro Rob's Gaming Videos